This is a question from F324 Rings Polymers Analysis, the OCR paper um, from June 2012. And this is a question about fats and cis and trans and double bonds. So the question starts by saying fats and oils are mixtures of organic compounds. Some processed foods contain trans oil, which will be linked to health risks. The incomplete structure below shows octadeca 12 enoate section of a trans oil. Add the double bond to the structure and state how the trans isomer is different to that from the cis isomer. So state means all you have to do is tell me the difference. So if we need to finish it off, it says it's 12 enoate, so that means the double bond starts on the 12th carbon. We number from the carbon of the ester, that was from the carboxylic acid. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You don't need to draw the numbers, but what you do need to draw is draw in the double bond. And the double bond starts at the twelve and ends at the thirteenth. State how the trans isomer is different to the cis isomer. So as we all know, the trans isomer has got hydrogens on different sides of the double bond. State one possible health risk of a diet that's high in trans oil. These are things like heart disease. And although you won't need one answer, if you find it easy, you might remember something like a stroke. The question goes on to talk about one of them, which is specifically cholesterol. And it says cholesterol is part of a family of compounds called steroids. The structure of cholesterol is shown below. How many carbons are, carbon atoms are there in a molecule of cholesterol? So we're going to have to go through and count them one by one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. And by doing a little dot, it means I can make sure I've counted them all up. Why don't I do a big dot? Because it says how many chiral centres are there in a molecule of cholesterol. So I'm going to have to count the number of chiral centres. Now remember, a, cent a carbon atom is chiral, a centre is chiral, if it has four different substituents, four different things coming off that carbon. So, that's not chiral, because it's got CH CH3 and CH3. That's not chiral, it's got two hydrogens. That's not chiral, it's got two hydrogens. That's not chiral, it's got two hydrogens. This carbon here, what's that got coming off it? Well, it has a long chain, it has a methyl group, and it's attached to something and a hydrogen. So there are one, two, three, and a missing hydrogen we don't show. Those are four different things. What about this carbon? Well, this carbon's got a thing coming off it. It's got a hydrogen. It's going towards that part of the ring, and it's going into the main bit of the ring. So there's four different substituents on that carbon atom there. Same as the next one round. Same as that one. Why is that one different? Because it's attached to something that goes up onto a methyl group. The one that comes down to the left is attached to something containing three different rings. The bond that goes to the right and down is attached to a bit of a five-membered ring, and there's a hydrogen, so there are four different substituents. Same as that carbon, five, six, seven. And a lot of people stop there, but look at this one at the end. That carbon is attached to a hydrogen, which we don't show, it's attached to an OH, so that's two different things. It's attached to the top part, or the bottom part of a cyclohexane ring, three different things. And that bond goes to the bottom part of a different bit of the cyclohexane ring, four different things. So it means we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chiral centres. The question goes on to ask a question about what are the functional groups that are present in a compound. So... With all of these things, you don't have to worry about the massive complexity of the molecule. You're saying, what are the functional groups? So if we look at the functional groups, the things that stand out usually are double bonds or things containing oxygen. Is There's an OH group there, which makes it an alcohol. And then we also have this thing here. 
Now, if we look at this bit and take it apart forensically, it's a C double bondo bonded to a carbon, call it R, bonded to an oxygen, bonded to another carbon we call R. So if you take that and you rotate it, because it might make it easy to see, it's O, R, R. This part here must be an ester. So the two functional groups are an alcohol and an ester. How do I know there's only two functional groups? Well, there are two marks available. Question final goes on to finally say, the compound is synthesized from naturally occurring steroids, suggests an advantage to develop a synthetic route to the oxandrolone starting from natural steroid. Remember, synthesis in the lab is easier because you always get the right chirality. From nature, you might get the wrong handedness, the wrong enantiomer, or you might get a mix and you've got to purify them. In a lab, we try and design our synthesis that gives us one optical isomer because the other optical isomer might have harmful side effects or it might dilute the dose because you'd have to give twice as much to get the right isomer. Compound C is an intermediate form during the synthesis of the oxandrolone. Suggests this two-step synthesis of oxandrolone from compound C for each of the synthesis, state the reagents in any conditions and state the functional groups. So, if we need to make an ester, we need to make an ester goes from what? It goes from an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. So if we need to make an ester in that compound, what do we have? Well, we have a carboxylic acid, but we don't have an alcohol. So we need to convert that aldehyde into an alcohol. Then we've made it into an alcohol, we can then make it into an ester. So the first step is you need to reduce the aldehyde to an alcohol. And if you reduce an aldehyde to an alcohol, you would get the alcohol. In fact, you need NaBH4. So that would then give you, if I scribble on this, it would give you that compound there as the alcohol, the OH. Now we've made the OH and we've got the carboxylic acid, we need to make the ester. And to make an ester from an alcohol and the carboxylic acid, you need to add H plus. 